بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I am Wafa Vinese with my group mate Khairul Anwar Today we are going to present about chapter 6 The Self, Mind, Gender and Body The Self Does the self exist? In both Eastern and Western cultures they believe that the self divides into an inter-private self and an outer public self. So, what is the self-concept? The self-concept can be summarized as the belief that we hold about our own attributes and how we evaluate the self from these qualities. Although our overall self-concept may be positive, there certainly are parts of it when we evaluate more positively than others. Our self-concept is a work in progress. It is always uh, modifying and developing through our life, as when we discover new ideas or social groups or even images we receive from the cultures around us. All these elements that contribute to our self-concept is our identity. So when we describe uh, attributes of self-concept along such dimensions as content, intensity, stability, and also positivity, for example, self-esteem. Self-esteem refers to the positivity of a person's self-concept. Like people with low self-esteem expect that they will not perform very well and they will try to avoid embarrassment, failure, and rejection. When we compare ourselves with others by appearance and evaluate it, this could be called as social comparison. Now, ideal self and actual self. The ideal self is a person's conception of how we would like to be, whereas the actual self refers to our more realistic appraisal of the qualities we do and we don't have. For example, we choose some products because we think they are consistent with our actual self, while we buy others to help us reach an ideal standard to reach an ideal self. So the question is, are we what we buy? Self-image congress models suggest that we choose products when their attributes match some aspect of the self. And when we choose a product that we think is aesthetically pleasing, this choice makes us feel better about ourselves. So we choose products when attributes match the self, which means the product usage could be equal to our self-image. Symbolic self-completion theory. It suggests that people who have an incomplete self-definition tend to complete this identity when they acquire and display symbols they associate with that role. For example, when young boys um, that are going through adulthood, they tend to purchase uh, products like cars and cigarettes that they believe it will develop masculinity. So these items can act as a social crush during this period of time uh, when they are exploring their new identity as an adult. Moving on to the extended self. There are four levels, individual level, family level, community level, and group level. Uh, for example, for uh, individual levels, like when we purchasing car or jewelry, as a family level, like when we purchase furniture or residency, and so on. So now, embodied cognition. This can be simply explained as the state of the body modifying the state of our mind. So our behavior and observation of what we do and what we buy, it actually shape our thoughts. There are two types of embodied cognition. Number one is power posing. As it is standing in a confident way, even though we're not even confident. So this actually can affect our brain activity. The other type is enclosed cognition that shows 
how the symbolic meaning of clothing can change how people behave. The digital self. Nowadays, there are applications that allow us virtually uh, to modify our digital self. So, uh, we strategically modify the profile photos, for example. So people can construct digital versions of themselves online. When we wear devices in our wrist, for like example, Apple Watch, uh, we are um, interacting the, our digital to become attached to our bodies. This could be called as wearable computing. There are also platforms that allow us or allow the shoppers and consumers uh, to use images of themselves and try on products even before they buy it so they can see how the product could appear on them virtually. So it called virtual makeover. On to gender. It is an important component of consumers' self-concept. So people often confirm to their culture's expectation about how views of their gender should act, dress, or speak. So we refer to these sets of expectations as sex rule. But the sex rule actually is different from culture to culture. And many societies, they are still expecting the traditional rule. For example, they're expecting male to have agentic goals, like they're expected to be assertive and have certain skills, while they are expecting women to have common well rules, when women are taught to foster harmonious relationships, for example. Gender identity versus sexual identity. So, a uh, gender rule identity is a state of mind as well as body. But unlike maleness and femaleness, the femininity and masculinity are not biological characteristics. So, a behavior that one culture considers to be masculine may get a different response in another culture. For example, a bromance, which is the affection between straight male and male friends. So, in some cultures, they are freely um, to show their affections between male friends, while in other cultures, they may not respond in the same way. Sex-type products. It reflects stereotypical masculine or feminine attributes and consumers associate them with one gender or another. Again, there are female rule, male rule, but also androgyny. Androgyny refers to positions of both masculine and feminine, feminine traits. So moving on to the body. The body image refers to a consumer's subjective evaluation of his or her physical self. Uh, so what is the ideals of beauty? It is actually a particular model or example of appearance. Like for example, the ideal beauty of men, they should have a well-defined six-pack or a certain type of hairstyles, for example. And uh, the ideal beauty of a female when they have to have a well-fitted body and a long hair or whatsoever. So, uh, body decoration and mutilation. Body decoration is when people in every culture, they actually adore or alter their bodies in some way. For example, um, tattoos, piercing, or um, even accessories that we wear around our body. And people actually do this for several purposes. Uh, they do it like uh, to distinguish group members from non-members, to place the individual in the social organization, to place the person in a gender category, to enhance sexual identification, to indicate desired social conduct, to indicate high status or rank, or to provide a sense of security.
So uh, let me give you a couple of examples. Like in, like when we, some people like to wear accessories uh, around their neck and they believe that uh, this particular accessory will prevent them from evil eye, for example. And so that means that's how people use uh, body decoration to provide them a sense of security. And another example is when American Indian of North America, they used to wear feathers ornaments that shows how many people they have killed. So uh, in this part, so their purpose was to indicate their high status or rank. We are going to answer some questions by our classmates. Brother Muhammad Arish asks, how do Eastern and Western culture differ in terms of how people think about the self? Well, Western cultures, they sway toward observing the self as a single entity, more individualistic. While in Eastern cultures, they view the individuals as part of a bigger entity like a part of family, a clan, or tribe. Sister Mahul Husseini asked, can social media change the ideal beauty? Well, we can see that the old media is constantly showing images of what considered beautiful, but these images, they affecting society and affecting the way we view them ourselves. But today, with social media platforms, consumers are spreading awareness about the different type of beauty. So these social media movements, they have really enlightened the market. For example, when the fat acceptance, acceptance movement happened, uh, it is social movement seeking to change anti-fat bias. So uh, Target, which is the largest retail in the United States, it has launched a plus size product line, especially after a very popular blogger with almost 70,000 followers on Instagram. She started a boycott against the stores because of its lack of plus size inventory. So nowadays, the market is more aware of these changes than it was before. It started to highlight different beauties and different type of uh, body shapes or skin colors. So uh, let's not forget that the ideal beauty is always shifting and changing through the times and the cultures and society.